idea of herd immunity as this kind of ritual sacrifice to the economy, that's not really something that holds up? Uh, I'm interested in public health. So, of course, the economy is important, but just from the perspective of public health, uh, it is advantageous to do an age targeted approach, both in terms of minimizing uh, the total number of deaths, the total mortality, because we're protecting the elderly, uh, but also uh, in terms of other public health outcomes. Uh, the lockdown does uh, cause other health problems. Uh, for example, uh, we have left less cancer screenings, and that doesn't have any immediate effect on cancer rates, but down the road, it will have. So uh, we- We're if already we left, detecting in the UK, okay, exactly. We're already detecting that, that the, the number of cancers reported has gone down. That's not because of fewer cancers. Correct, yeah. So we can do it for the reported and for the screening. We know those numbers. We probably haven't seen it in the mortality yet because it's often a few years before diagnosis to mortality. But uh, that's, uh, that's going to create uh, higher mortality down the road. Uh, we have, of course, the mental health uh, issues. Uh, that is uh, is a problem with the lockdown. Uh, in the United States, uh, the childhood vaccination rates has plummeted. And uh, therefore, we have to be careful so we don't get uh, outbreaks of uh, childhood diseases like measles or mumps or rubella, for example. And uh, so, so when the utilization of the healthcare system goes down, People are not using the system for, for the fun of it. They're using it because it actually helps reduce uh, disease and reduce mortality. And when it gets used less, then we should expect to see consequences, not necessarily this month or this year, but in the years to come. So that's a major concern. Now, that, that is a major concern, of course. Uh, and balancing this with other illnesses seems to be only an emerging conversation, unfortunately. Now, there's also this, this issue where you have a lot of irrelevant measures or measures that don't seem to match up with the transmission dynamics of SARS-CoV-2, even in terms of the pure lower transmission rate objectives. So banning some outdoor activities in different countries, for example, uh, does that accomplish anything? Uh, the, some of these curbs on civil liberties that don't really relate to the transmission dynamics of COVID-19. Uh, that, is that opportunism? I mean, I, I don't ask you to have a political science understanding of it. I don't either. But um, basically, do you think that things like banning golf or flying drones around to, to check if people are in their house inside, is that helpful for a public health response? Uh, I don't think so because uh, uh, you have to have trust and flying drones is probably not a good way to, to uh, achieve trust. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Julia Marcus, uh, who's a colleague of, of mine, uh, uh, at uh, at Harvard Medical School, she has written about uh, about that in a very sort of a, in a good way, I think. Do Dr. Marcus's work lately on uh, pandemic shaming, on those sorts of things, exact very much takes that HIV lens, applies it. What are the parallels with the way people are stigmatizing around COVID nineteen and uh, you know so called non compliance with different public health measures, things like that. Actually brings me to a question that's a little more philosophical about your perspective on public health. Now, if there's a public health strategy that the public won't do, is that something that really only works on paper? I mean, you I recall that there was not a huge conversation early on in the lockdowns about what does social uptake look like? But I I think or what does social sustainability look like? It was more, we're going to flatten the curve to um, increase healthcare capacity. Ha the, the change has now been a little scattered. I think you have some 
people who are genuinely want suppression, containment at a reasonable rate, but not going for a zero COVID policy. But you also have zero, like you have people looking for March, April level restrictions, uh, irrespective of community transmission until a vaccine. And that doesn't seem realistic. Uh, yeah, I think when you do a public health strategy, you have to take into account what uh, people are willing to do. Yeah, but I'm baffled by the. Uh, uh, I don't understand the political and psychological uh, uh, aspects of this, uh, and I'm baffled how it has sort of turned out.